If you're in the market for a smart TV box, you have an old TV um, that you want to make smart or you have a smart TV and you want to experience something different, then I think the Apple TV 4K could possibly be uh, one of the best options that you have out there. <laughs> Hey, what up is your boy Mob Justice back again with another video and for today we get into a review about a year later um, into the Apple TV um, 4K that is uh, the latest generation of Apple's uh, 4K streaming box. As always this uh, video is brought to you by the team over at Lion Media. Uh, head on over to check out some of the crispiest uh, photo, video and audio content that's www.lionmedia.com. Head on over uh, check it out and just see uh, what the team can do for you as I said for today we are getting into a review of the Apple TV 4k I've had this device for almost a year or so now it was announced uh, back in April last year and I remember making a video about it at the time and saying how excited I was you know for that specific device particularly the fact that it had a new remote and all of that uh, the device has ended up coming out in May and then I got it sometime I think in June or so and I've had uh, quite a bit of time um, to actually sit with it, live with it, um, watch it, stream, listen to music and the like and these are just some of my thoughts. Just to get into a little bit of history, I've been an Apple TV user for about eight or nine years now. I had the third generation Apple TV, the one that came out in 2012 uh, for a number of years. And it was only last year uh, that I upgraded to the 4K variants and I'd actually skipped um, the original Apple TV 4K. So quite happy with the purchase. And then in addition to that, I use a Samsung Smart TV that's running the Tizen OS as well as an Android TV box that um, we've reviewed on this uh, channel before. So those are some of the ways in which I'm able to get um, a bit of a comparison going when it comes to the Apple TV 4K. In terms of the unboxing experience, it's a very simple, you know, package. You get uh, the box itself, um, you get a power cable that's included inside the box, and then you also have a lightning uh, cable that's there to charge the remote control as well as uh, you know some uh, documentation and then in terms of the setup it's a very simple setup um, especially with the new generations as long as you have an iOS device like an iPhone or an iPad you're easily able to you know just have your just have your device close to the Apple TV when it first switches on and you're able to do a smart transfer of data you know passwords Wi-Fi all of that perhaps the most hyped feature when it came to the newest generation of the Apple TV wasn't the software or the box itself but rather the remote control it sort of sits as a cross I would say between um, the the small Apple TV remote uh, the silver one uh, with the black buttons as well as um, the third and fourth generation one that black with the touch interface sort of like a merging um, of the two I personally um, like that remote and uh, it's got a touchpad and uh, sometimes it's a little bit uh, you know iffy to use but I'll say for the most part you know I've been enjoying that because you you have the ability to press buttons but also to use it as a bit of a touch interface the remote itself has really good battery life because I've been using it for like I said you know close on 11 12 months now and I'm still left with 20% battery I've never charged um, you know this particular remote for other tasks because the Apple TV does allow you to do some gaming but also at the same time time as a device um, as an input device if you're searching things like Netflix or YouTube it's a bit uh, tedious going through you know those uh, scrolling keyboards you can attach a Bluetooth um, keyboard to this device and at the same time um, you can use your phone um, the uh, the remote app on iPhone is quite excellent uh, for that type of thing 
When it comes to smart TVs, I would say the most important thing is the software experience. And for me, because I have, um, you know, Tizen OS and Android TV, I'm able to see, you know, the different ways in which um, the three different systems operate. And for me, I can definitely say that Apple TV has uh, the nicest looking interface and probably one of the simplest ones to use. If you use any iOS device, you know, or a Mac or something like that, it would totally fit um, into that type of thing but one of the biggest differences it has a high res um, interface which is something that you think um, would be commonplace by now but it's not so it's really quite refreshing when you switch on an Apple TV and you see uh, that gorgeous interface that either comes in a dark mode or a light mode and because it runs much like uh, any other iOS device there are a couple of elements such as a home screen uh, that's what you're greeted with uh, you know whenever you switch it on um, you have the ability to do multitasking you just double tap uh, the remote and you're able to see um, you know your different apps if you use an iPad or an iPhone you'd be used to that interface and then at the same time you have a control center as well much like uh, the control center that you see um, on iPhone there's a control center that allows you to do you know to see your profile your different audio options um, you know and that type of thing one of the key features added to the latest Apple TV is special audio and that's basically um, audio that allows for quote-unquote a real-world um, audio experience in terms of placements placements of uh, elements uh, around the screen or room if you use um, you know headphones if you turn your head you're able to have um, the sound and objects moving in real time with you it's not a feature that I particularly like so usually I have it off because it can be a little bit disorienting but it's really cool I think it works best on movies from my testing and TV shows as opposed to music. I don't think um, a lot of the, you know, music that is said to be special audio, um, they've done a good job. And also on special audio, an interesting feature is that when you go through the menu of the Apple TV, you can, it has a grid. And usually as you're going through the different elements on the grid, you can hear it's got a little ping sound as you go through each icon. And the little pings, you sort of move with you. Um, you know, depending on what type of screen they are sort of uh, set off as if they were in real time and space. So if an icon is on the left side of the screen, you hear it on the left side. And then if it's as an as it moves towards the right, by the time you get the last icon, uh, the sound is now being heard on the left. You don't normally hear it on the TV, but if you have earphones, that's when you hear it. And because this is an Apple device, if you're part of the Apple ecosystem, it allows you to stream content. Um, content from you know one so from other apple devices particularly computers so if there's movies or music that you have on a separate computer it doesn't have to be a macbook as long as it has uh, itunes um, it's one of the things i used to like using on the previous generation and then at the same time because it's an apple device it has act it has excellent app support developers tend to have um, support you know for most of the different formats etc so you'll find uh, most of the apps are available on Apple TV and at the same time there's a lot of optimizations that you see for Apple TV apps I can point to the Netflix app and the YouTube app uh, to make the example that I'm trying to make because those are sort of standard apps Google has made those standard across different platforms uh, the way that YouTube works on an iPad is the way that it works um, on uh, you know on different on other uh, you know mobile devices but when it comes to TV interfaces Tizen YouTube as well as Android TV YouTube are exactly the same but when you see it on Apple TV there are just some slight differences here and there but I'd say the biggest one is on Netflix on Netflix you see a completely different interface especially when you're watching um, content you have the ability on Apple TV to use the scroll wheel um, function for example it's just a small thin bar at the bottom as opposed to the big one uh, that you see on the other platforms and when it comes to the 
that app support one of the biggest things i'm glad that they fixed on apple tv was support for 4k content on youtube because that was a sticking point on the previous generation apple tv 4k that it had 4k functionality but not on youtube because there was this fight of formats between youtube and apple and i'm glad they finally came to an agreement because it really looks good and then on top of that one of the other things i really enjoy about the software experience is the different wallpapers that they have um, on offer you can have them as videos you can have them as pictures uh, but they really really look good i tend to like the area of videos i can spend hours just looking at that stuff with some music in the background we've already mentioned the apple ecosystem but i wanted to mention four key points uh, that come with having an apple tv um, on the side of apple the first one is that it pairs very well with uh, airpods i use the third generation airpods and uh, they work you know quite seamlessly uh, with the apple tv 4k you just connect them uh, via the control panel it's able to detect if they're in the area and then the private listening it's really an amazing um, an experience and i think i'm gonna get into it a little bit more when i do a review of uh, that set of airpods later on but you do get benefits such as uh, your special audio and that type of thing so really great and uh, from a private listening point of view it's a really great experience and then the second one is that you can actually use uh, the apple tv and the tv that is attached to as a second display um, so no need you know for connecting an hdmi cable you know or thunderbolt to display nothing like that you can just wirelessly pick uh, the uh, apple tv as a second display and it will display your content and then the third one is uh, you know similarly um, uh, when it comes to this wireless sharing of content is airplay and that's really been a big thing you can cast music you can cast video um, that uh, then appears um, on the tv and then you know all of your different collections especially um, apple services it works really well and i think that leads me on to the last one and that is around those specific apple services the apple tv 4k is a really great device for consuming all of these different Apple services and I think it fits into um, where Apple is going right uh, because they're trying to get more and more people to subscribe to their different services and this is another conduit through which people can access apple music um, apple arcade for the games apple tv plus for their movies and content uh, whilst all at the same time um, being a repository for you know uh, the itunes library as well as you know um, the itunes movie store all of that content is available there Zooming in specifically on AirPlay, I just wanted to make a note because there are a lot of competing technologies, but two of the big ones at the moment is AirPlay on the side of Apple, and then you have Chromecast on the side of Google. And what I found in my you know, life just, being, just having a couple of uh, Apple products is the fact that Apple really plays well when it comes to airplay with apple services so for example you know beaming your web page onto a tv your photos videos uh, from your you know camera roll and all of that um, onto the tv from an iphone from an ipad right and then the different services so you start playing a song um you know through apple music on your phone pairs very well onto the Apple TV, things like that. But other services, it can be a bit of a hit or miss. And I'll zoom in on the YouTube experience. Um, I would say that, you know, if you're using YouTube, because a lot of people um, use YouTube as, you know, one of their main um, sources of content. And if you are airplaying YouTube, I think the experience is much better when you're casting through Chromecast, um, you know, the YouTube app, whether it's on your phone or whether it's on the tablet. That's just one of those things because it's a little bit of a clumsy experience that you have now when you're doing airplay for YouTube videos. That's just been my experience. Whilst I am a fan of the Apple TV, there are a couple of things that I would uh, change or at least like to see being added to the platform. 
First is a support for a browser of some sort. I mean, if you use Tizen on Samsung TVs and I think even uh, WebOS when it comes to LG TVs and um, you know Google uh, on the Android side, there is that ability to install browsers of some sort and actually browse the internet. And especially if you're going to connect a keyboard, it can make for a great um, you know, web experience. Some people actually, instead of going the route of streaming boxes, they actually attach actual computers uh, to their TVs in the lounge. The next three all have to do with ports. First one is uh, having some type of a wired uh, wired audio connection um, because you can connect um, to speakers via Bluetooth and the like, uh, Bluetooth speakers, Bluetooth headphones, but physically having some type of a connection, maybe for some of the legacy systems. Um, so it leaves you with a situation where you have to connect uh, via your TV, your home theater, that type of thing. The last one would be having a USB port of some sort to connect uh, perhaps thumb drives, hard drives, that type of thing. We see this on uh, competing devices. I have this on the Android box. You just connect even on the on the TV itself. You just connect a USB drive and you can, you know, watch the content that's there. And that leads me um, on to one of the other things that, you know, would be nice to change on uh, Apple TV. In the same way that you can download games onto the device, it would be great to be able to download content, right? I'm actually surprised that there isn't that option when it comes to Apple uh, Music and Apple TV Plus because these are options on the mobile devices. And one has to think about situations where what happens if you don't have an internet connection, uh, maybe you have an outage of some sort and you can't get online, what happens then? And I think that leads nicely onto the three main gripes I have about this device. Uh, the first one is the fact that this is not a great offline device. If you're not connected to the internet, it's a really tough device to, to actually enjoy because all the content tends to be online unless you are using home sharing and you're streaming um, content um, through that connection. But even that can be hit or miss from uh, my experience. Second gripe is the fact that the Apple TV 4K does not have a universal volume control for its own device. What do I mean by this? The Apple TV 4K, the new remote, one of the things that people like about it is that it can control the TV volume, but it itself does not have an internal volume control. And that's really bad for a couple of reasons because in my particular case, I have a set of speakers that is connected via optical and that does not respond to that uh, volume control because the volume control is not an internal one. The reason why this is really frustrating is that if you connect certain types of speakers, like I said, in my situation, I have to control uh, the volume of those particular speakers independent. And uh, that particular set of speakers doesn't have a remote or anything. So I physically have to stand up and go and turn the knob on and off, you know, so that I can increase the volume as opposed to just doing it on a remote, which I can do on the Android TV box. But what's really frustrating is the fact that certain times when you do airplay from uh, apple music onto the apple tv 4k it does that ha does have that ability where it is controlling its own internal device volume but for some reason this is not a feature wide uh feature and i think it would be a really simple thing for them to fix um with the with the software upgrade and i don't know why they haven't done this yet the last one is something that i've observed when watching youtube using the apple tv 4k so anyone who watches youtube knows that as long as you're not using premium there are ads that either go in between, before, whatever it is, those skippable ads. Now, the issue is the fact that if you have videos in a queue, which um, YouTube tends to have, if you click skip ad in the middle of an ad using the remote uh, on the Apple TV 4K, it skips gets into the next video, but for some reason, it doesn't just skip the ad, it goes to the next video. I find that very odd. So in conclusion, if you're already in the Apple ecosystem, have one or two Apple devices, uh, the Apple TV 4K is a really great companion. Um, you know, for the rest of your Apple ecosystem life. And like I said, a great device to consume uh, those Apple services such as Apple TV uh, Plus, as well as Apple Music, Apple Arcade, and all of the different uh, 
programs that are there, the podcast and all that. And the device can actually be added to HomeKit, uh, which is uh, Apple's hub uh, for smart home devices. So you can control it all in one place from that point of view and actually take advantage of things like Siri uh, because Apple TV does come with the Siri uh, functionality, which is another plus uh, for the device. You can use Siri to actually search for content and all of that, which I forgot to mention earlier on. On the last point, even if you're not in the Apple ecosystem, I do say uh, that the Apple TV 4K is worth it. It can be a good first entry um, into the world of Apple. And even if it's your only uh, Apple device, it can be a really great device. One of its biggest advantages compared to other platforms is the fact that there are no ads. Um, Apple is very serious when it comes to this um, advertiser situation and it carries through to the Apple TV platform. So one of the things that you are paying for is that uh, you have that ad free um, experience that you have. But more than anything else, it's a premium experience. It looks good, um, delivers great content. You've got um, great apps that are supported by the developers and it all ties in uh, to a whole host um, of other devices out there. And as much as we talk about the Apple ecosystem, a lot of um, they've actually been opening up the Apple TV um, ecosystem to the devices outside. A little bit surprising, but uh, I think it's been a good development. So that's been it for this uh, video. Like I said, the Apple TV 4K, I think it's definitely um, worth it in uh, 2022. You can let me know your thought. Uh, I will definitely be doing, you know, more videos like this, maybe uh, just getting into the other operating systems. I have spoken quite a bit about Apple. Android TV in the past when I reviewed uh, the Xiaomi uh, My Box, uh, My Box S um, as part of the Christmas guide a couple of years ago, and also Tizen and all of that stuff. The only one that I'm really keen to get my hands on that I haven't had a chance to really experience that much is Roku. Um, I've had the opportunity to use um, Amazon Fire TV as well as LG's WebOS, but really keen to see um, what Roku who's about and you know how that system um, actually works if you use any of these systems if you're an apple tv um, user or perhaps you have an apple tv and a competing system you can let me know your thoughts you know do you think it's worth it do you think it's overpriced um, do you think there's too much hype around it you guys can let me know what you think and i'll catch you guys in the next video this is muffs too much and you're watching mob justice tv like us on facebook Follow us on Instagram, follow us on Twitter, we're there on YouTube. Thank you for watching our video, subscribe.